Oh, here he comes, here he comes, here he comes. Sam just put the lead poison to him. Good shot, bro. That was good work, good job. I got 25 cents so I can make him fall over right there. <laughs> he did not fall. Got him, Patrick! Good boy, Charlie. This is Charlie's favorite thing to do because he thinks he's a big, giant dog, don't you, Charlie? He don't realize he's got little bitty legs. We're here at the San Enrique Ranch in Coahuila, Mexico. The ranch is almost 50,000 acres, low fence. But what I do try and pay attention to is I try and get rid of the deer that don't belong in the herd. Anytime I have a deer that's an eight point with real short G3s and he's four and a half years old or older, I'll usually shoot him. Anytime I'll have a deer with seven points or less, it's four and a half or older, I will always shoot him. Got the trusty 300 Win Mag sitting right here, ready to rumble. Let's see what happens. He looks like he's probably a four and a half year old deer because of his body. But when you have an established G4 on a 10 point like that one down there, four and a half, that's what you're shooting these culls for. You're leaving a buck like that in this area to breed. Get rid of the big seven point. absolutely doesn't fit. In the same area, we've got a beautiful 10 point. It's part of the homework. You gotta take care of the ones that will not help build your herd. That one there isn't a lot of help. Let's go see what we got. You found him, you're a good boy. Yeah, you are. That's that big seven point. He's busted himself up a little bit. I'm gonna guess this deer to be seven and a half because I've been seeing him. Oh yeah, he's at least a seven and a half year old deer. His fourth molar is worn completely down to his gum line. So he's a fully mature deer, full chested, big headed. His antlers don't fit the game. This G2 is not even broken. That's as long as it was. I did see him when he had this G2 on and it was about 10 inches long, and his main beam over here might have made 22 inches. So on his best day as a seven point, because he had this G3, he was about 120 inch deer. When you're trying to shoot and raise 150, 160 inch deer, you can't leave these in your breeding population. And so when we get out and we have spare time, nobody out here hunting with us, we help keep the breeding population in order and in check. Is that right, Charlie? Charlie's found him a little spot right there that he likes. Charlie, let him go, Charlie. I can't pull both of you, buddy. I'm Patrick Starnes, and this is my good buddy, Sam Smith. We're down here in northern Mexico on a ranch that's almost 50,000 acres. I've been outfitting down here for about 22 years. It's really been a privilege. Northern Mexico is a special place, don't you think? You know, I love Mexico so much because I, you know, I grew up uh, deer hunting in Louisiana. Uh, very difficult to hunt. Lots of the bucks are nocturnal. It's really tough to get to them. Um, I first hunt out here was a little over 10 years ago, met Patrick. And that first uh, three day hunt, I saw more deer than I'd seen in 30 years. So that's the big one. The other one, you know, just the romance of riding around these old red clay roads and you never know what you're gonna see around the corner. We've had, last season we had uh, 
for days when the deer are rutting, drizzling, cold, and it just gets up in the morning. Even our necks are swollen up. We <laughs> went to bucks, buddy. Yeah, we 25 to or more bucks in a, in a morning sit and see the same thing in the evening. So you see it over 50 bucks in a day. Not every day, but those special days like that and just amazing. Just the whole romance about this place just makes it so special. It's so big, all the neighbors are really big, and you, know, you don't have to worry about a deer jumping over a fence and someone's gonna shoot him even though he's three years old. That doesn't happen here. They die of old age or we take them out of the herd. My old bones, they're getting cold, Daddy. I had to put on my, my little I'm chili gloves. And my, I'm trying to be a man hat pretty quick. He's 30 yards in the brush. It's an eight. Here he comes. We need to get rid of this one. This one don't fit in the game plan, I believe. That's the one that don't fit. This is one of the ones that don't fit in the game plan. Shot him right behind the shoulder. Good kill. That was a good kill. We're sitting here. He's got a doe. We're sitting here and we're watching this really great buck up here in the road, and he's still there. A really big deer still in the road. We're watching this deer. Doe comes running out of the brush. Behind her comes this buck that we absolutely don't want him anywhere near breeding a doe. Especially when we got one like that right here. Sam just put the lead poison to it. Good shot, bro. That was good work, good job. Way to go. Good boy, Charlie. Good boy, that's my boy. Good kill, let's age him right quick. Fully mature. Yeah, fully mature deer. Nothing. No, look. Oh yeah. He's at least a seven and a half year old deer. Jawbone completely flat. That's an excellent harvest. Oh Way to go, bro. Good job. <laughs> that one we need to get rid of. Yeah, our main goal this weekend is to run around here and uh, run into some of these management bucks that we really want to take out. Some of them we've seen already earlier in the season and uh, some of them we hadn't seen yet. Some of these deer we're looking for would be these, you know, a, a 240 pound deer that's 16 inches wide and a little short times this long. With, six and eight points and uh, we don't need those guys to stay around. They can't breed. If we're gonna keep on track where we're headed growing these big deer, those deer can't breed. Kill me when you ready. Ah. Wow, Tex. You're a happy trigger, boy. I did. I that one there, here. he got the ugly award. His tines curl forward ugly. Got him, Patrick! <laughs> Look at this crash. Would you call this genetic enhancement? <laughs> Way to go, bro. But as y'all can see here, this deer, he has nothing going on in the genetic category. These curly old tines. This is the second deer you've shot this year out here that has these curly old tines, you know? We hadn't seen this deer all year. Nobody no. has. No, he wouldn't have made it very long. We'd have shot it. But these these deer like this, we, we try and get as many of them out of the herd as we can. We have a really hard time doing it. Right. That's what we're doing today. Oh, 
my god. Time to put that one in the program, huh? I got 25 cents so I can make him fall over right there without move. I mean, him just not move. Just legs come out from under him. This is another one of those, another one of those situations of a very mature deer that has just on top of his head and his antler development, it didn't work out. So we're gonna add this one to the list of we did goods. He has to fall in his track, right? No moving, right in his track, right in his track. Here we go, big boy. I'm gonna crank her on up a little. He did not fall. <laughs> he did not fall. Darn it. And it was a real true shot because I knocked myself a little bit in the nose. Am I bleeding? Uh-uh. <laughs> I felt it though, tender spot, tender. He didn't fall in the road, but boy, he didn't go very far. Good guy to put a hunt on deer like that. He didn't exactly fall, but he took 12 steps, 14 maybe, so the shot was perfect. Let's go have a look. He's just all bent up. His, tie, his main beams don't even grow straight normal. They're past their prime. They're on their way down. They get like that, you gotta do what you gotta do. You gotta pick up your gun and get rid of them. We gotta let those better deer, y'all seen a lot of those deer? You gotta let those better deer get in the breeding program. Keep these out. This guy's got all his times on his head. With this size body, he probably weighs over 200 pounds. This size body, nobody wanted to square off to him. Good call, bro. You called him. Yeah, we got rid of that one. That's a good kill there. Stop it. You can't eat them all. Broadside to the right and above it. Take him, Sam. Way high. He's right above where he just shot, standing broadside. Walking left. Bah, he's going left and high. He's broadside, you can see his head and horns, right straight above the big tree. His body's to the right of his head. Walking left. I got him. That one got him. I'm on him, I'm on him, I'm on him. He, he, no, he's still up. But he did go down. Pretty shooting, Tex. That, that last shot, I couldn't see him until he jumped up in the air. Go get him, Charlie. Look at that old thing. Look at that thing. Definitely a management bug. <laughs> Way to go, bro! I think you had him, and I think I got him. Sam just put the lead boys to it. Good shot, bro. Wow, Tex. Way to go, bro! And it was a real true shot because I knocked myself a little bit in the nose. Am I bleeding? Uh-uh. <laughs>